Okay, let's start the uh, June 19th uh, select board meeting. We will open and start with the allegiance. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty then. You got manifest for us right there, Chris? Is this to accept or approve? <laughs> approve. All right. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the uh, accounts payable manifest uh, dated 6 20 2017 and the. So the accounts payable is 6 19, the payroll is 6 20. Uh, am I looking at the wrong one here? Accounts payable 6 20, it says. Um, oh. Look at the agenda. Or for payment by oh I'm sorry. Well that's dated six sixteen. Payroll manifest yeah, June twentieth. Okay. Which other? So um a separate one for the Nope, altogether. Okay. And the payroll manifest for six nineteen twenty seventeen. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Now you can sign. Conservation Commission? Uh, I, I expect it pretty soon. I okay. think we're kind of winging it. So. Okay, that's fine. I believe we have one set of public and one set of non-public minutes and that um, there were no edits to eat, eat either of those, right, Don? Correct. Okay, so I'll take a motion. We'll make a motion that we accept the public minutes from June 5th, 2017 and the non-public minutes from June 5th, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Three. Three to one. Alrighty then, boards and committees. Now there was planning. There was a planning board meeting, but I didn't attend. And, Tyler and, was and yeah, I think it was a conceptual, and then there was discussion about impact fees. Okay. But in the meeting on the 28th, it's, um, there were no cases before the planning board, so um, that the 28th meeting is canceled. Okay. Um, Dawn, I saw an email that about there is a meeting scheduled for budget committee, correct? Tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow yep. night. Yep. Okay. Yep. And you are up. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, I'll be there. Okay. Yeah, I'm already, already on it. Fantastic. All right. Uh, no other boards and committees at this point in time, so we'll move on to time administra town administrator report. All right. Uh, our road agent position has been posted. Uh, it's up where we can think to put it up. If anybody has any suggestions of other places where people might see it, I'm all ears. Um, you know, we're up on the the best of the online, uh, free online things and the municipal association. I, I haven't found much in the way of trade associations that would be good, but, um, you know, or any, anything you can think of, let me know. Um, got a couple of responses already. Uh, we have another couple of weeks before the deadline, so. Um, what about sharing it maybe with the planning association? Uh, yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah, but the well, within maybe sharing it with the planning association. Within the uh, within the municipal world, everybody really watches the H NHMA yeah. side, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's the the industry kind of stuff that I, I don't know if the of anything out there, but 
Anyway, um, I think we'll also be <coughs> posting for a firefighter EMT shortly. Uh, as you know, we had a uh, resignation there. Um, also, our librarian has uh, oh, that, that resignation. Was really? That? Yep. Mm -hmm. I didn't uh, catch that. Librarian Eric Stern is leaving us as oh, well. Okay. Um, That's unfortunate. Yeah, uh, he uh, is gonna. He he didn't take another job. He's gonna be caring for his kids who have some scheduling challenges and stuff. That um, things are changing at home for him. So he's uh, he's gonna be here through the end of August, and that job has been posted as well. The okay. trustees have updated that and are searching. That's too bad. Yeah. Um, uh, our audit field work is this week. The auditor will be in the office the next couple of days doing the, you know, chasing transactions and looking at that kind of stuff. Uh, and that should wrap up relatively quickly thereafter. A um, couple of things out of the fire department. The, uh, the dry hydrant on Macrillus has failed. Um, that's, uh, if you know the spot, but it's in between the bridge and uh, Case Road, about halfway there along the river. Um, not drawn anything. There's some kind of crack or leak or something uh, there. It's one of those PVC ones that. Yeah, it's plastic. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. How old is it, Chris? Uh, 15 years, I, okay. th I think we yeah. narrowed it down to something like that, maybe okay. 20. Yeah, I have no idea what the lifespan is. Well, what we're. This is the second plastic one. We had, remember we had trouble with the one on Deerfield Road, and we replaced that, I think it was a year ago now. A couple of years ago. Two years ago now. Um, and uh, definitely iron's the way to go on those. You know, we, we're seeing the plastic ones fail. It's not, yep. it's not working. So um, we did have a little bit in the budget for um, maybe doing something uh, upriver from there on the uh, north or west side of Nottingham Lake uh, this year. Um, there was a spot there that we thought might be good for a dry hydrant, but um, in we're, we're waiting for one more expert to look at it. it. It may be too steep and too far from the water to be a really effective dry hydrant spot. So we have a, we own a parcel there, a little shred mm -hmm. on the on the side of the lake. Um, so uh, I think we'll pr the the Macrillus dry hydrant is probably too expensive to fit in with found money this year that's a bigger project it's a big drop down to the river there um, the Deerfield Road one we were able to do in-house pretty much um, but the the equipment that we're renting this summer isn't big enough to do the Macrillus one even if we had the time and the expertise we, we wouldn't be able to do it so uh, I think we're probably going to be without that until next year um, it's um, that serves well, pretty much from the dry hydrant at Bascom's to the Lee Line, that's really the the only one in there. Well, they can they can get into the lake if they if they really need to, but it's not as quick and easy as the Macrillus dry hydrant. So uh, there's one on Smoke that they can get at to kind of back up that. So um, they'll be okay, but um, it is a spot that we we want to get service back to. Um, and uh, they're starting to get ready. Yes, next year in the capital improvement plan, next year uh, our SCBAs, the breathing apparatus for firefighters, age out. They you can't use them once they age out. They'll be 15. Uh, they're starting to shop that and get ready for uh, that process. That's a hundred and sixty grand in the CIP that we had planned on spreading over. 2018 and 2019 uh, looks like that's going to work. The do half of it in 18, half of it in 19. The way the the uh, licensing and the the uh, certification of all those things go, you want them all to be the same, uh, so that everything's interchangeable and you don't have to train people on different setups. So that's going to work. We'll be able to do half and half. Um, they are starting. They they just had some costs um, to repair some of the uh, ones that we have now. Um, which is unfortunate because we're only going to have them for another year maybe, but um, they're fading. So they're starting to work on that. Um, 
Let's see, what else? Uh, the state budget is coming close to being done. Uh, the conference committee is done with it and it goes back to both houses this week. Um, the highlights or lowlights, um, there was, in earlier versions, there was a pile of money for property tax relief. It was just a revenue sharing kickback. That's gone. Um, and uh, the rooms and meals uh with the, there was some hope that the state would get back on track with the rooms and meals revenue sharing uh that's gone so the catch-up that they were hoping for isn't going to happen there so there's no no new revenue in either of those places for us um there is a separate bill that, that i believe is waiting for the governor's signature um sending some of the state surplus from this year back for uh for highway projects um that looks like it's going to happen uh and it's a sizable amount of money I, I think we're if it finds its way through to a final approval i think we stand to take in about 140 grand um that the way the law is written you're not really supposed to use it for um stuff you've already budgeted for they don't they don't want you to just you know save the money they want you to put it to work so uh in a couple of weeks we'll we'll be back with some thoughts on how to approach that if it if it's really going to be real money um nhma is suggesting that we we get started planning for it so sure. um 140 it's a nice it's a nice amount of money it's it's hard to find a hundred and forty thousand dollar project like that so um you know we'll i'll talk with john and see what what we think we ought to do with it but um we'll know more on that in a couple of weeks um can you use it to grow scope on an existing project yeah. to do more that you couldn't afford previously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I, and I, this is just coming. It you know just came out of committee late last week, and I haven't talked to John about it, but I, I suspect uh, we'll probably come to you and say we can look at some additional overlay work because that's a relatively easy right. flex up yep. thing to do late in the year, and we know we can identify the work. We can probably find a contractor. Um, and it's um, you can really spend exactly what you want to spend um, and there may also be equipment things that we or vehicle things that we know are coming that maybe we can do ahead of time so those, those are the two things that jump to my mind I haven't talked to John about it yet I have to see if he has any other ideas um, there may be some culverts or something like that at that scale that are on the list but we just haven't got to yet um, dry hydrants not quite <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know and i would expect some more guidance to come on how creative you can be with that money as well that's this is an odd thing in a way yeah. um and the, the legislature wrote it to say uh you as the board can treat it like unanticipated revenue which means you can you can receive it and spend it without town meeting involvement which is um is not common for state funds like that so um Anyway, that's we'll have more more on that in a couple of weeks, um, and I think that is it. We have several other things that you'll be hearing from me on. But. Okay. Any questions for Chris? Do we have to use that money by the end of the calendar year for the highway department? I don't think so. Department? No. Okay. Um, I, I I think the default is probably that it just. Uh, if you don't spend it, it just it's like other unanticipated revenue and it finds its way back to the uh, fund balance. Um, so I, and that's how I think it should work. I haven't seen any guidance on it, but um, that could set us up to maybe spend it next year as part right. of something With else. The, right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that would if we did that, it would mean uh, asking town meeting to take it out of the fund balance. Right. But right. That's, right. Whatever. That's yeah. okay. Yep. And we may decide that it's better to. You know, build it into something else. Think about it rather than rush into it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. All right. Um, since Matt's here, do you want to? Yeah, we'll do. That? We'll do a quick, uh, quick Marston update. Matt Kachukas is here. Uh, I have. I had. I wanted to give you something just to show you that we're actually <laughs> we're, we're doing some work. <laughs> we're trying. We're trying. Uh, this is a, just a little snapshot of the revised phase one plan mm -hmm. uh, there's a bigger version of it on the table if you want to look at it in detail later um, 
we we went back at the at the we get the first numbers from a couple of firms in terms of a cost estimate uh, that were way out of our league in terms of the full yep. the full plan. We, we knew we knew we weren't going to be we knew we weren't going to be going after the full year the full plan in the first year, but um, so we we carved it back. Barry carved it back mm -hmm. to. Uh, phase one being the multi-purpose baseball softball field on the front side yep. and uh, uh, parking lot trails and uh, spot for the community garden uh, and then went back to those firms and said hey we, we we cut it back give us a quick number on on what that would look like um, the quick number for we've only heard from one of them uh, it's a tough time of year to get you know free quotes on projects that aren't real yet but yeah. uh, the, the the quick number back that, that I gave you a copy of just to kind of put things to scale for you was 350 um, that doesn't include any of the finished stuff around a ball field like fencing and dugouts and all of all of that doesn't include a well um, but it's that's mostly earth moving um, uh, and the the trails are are they're still in the plan but there's no funds here to do anything in terms of surface for the trails it's yep. um, um, so that's where we sit right now where we think we can uh, some of these material costs we can meet with stuff from the pit so there's there's a little savings to be had there um, and uh, they, this firm pushed back to Barry and said, if we do X and Y, we might be able to shave it a little bit more. So that's the, that's where we are right now is is going back and looking at a um, a couple more tweaks. That Barry's yeah, is a safe way to put it. The, uh, I mean, all the contractors are willing to take some money off the top if they can sell the uh, topsoil. But so it's a trade-off. I mean, there's probably 12 to 18 inches of topsoil there, which is great to have for the fields and for anything else we want to have it in town whether it's to right. idolize these fields the school fields I mean it's a yep. great resource for us but you know the contractors all look at it as well oh, there's great topsoil you know we can lower your number because they know they're going to make money on the backside by, by how much you out. know like I mean is it a significant amount that that would be worth uh, I don't is it worth that. it I guess is my question if you talk to the dirt guys you know like a one of the guys that does landscaping in town here no it's well, it's not worth it in terms of if we want the fields to grow and be successful, you know, the, the key is to have good soil on them. Yep. And if we strip it off and come back with two to three inches, we're going to be over fertilizing it and we're going to, you know, and they're going to end up getting beaten pretty yep. handily. Whereas if we can leave a good six to eight inches of topsoil on it, so maybe not the entire 18 inches, but you know, then it comes time to, all right, you know, we've got this awesome resource of topsoil. Can we put it on the school? Can we put it here? Can we use it other places in town as opposed to selling it off? And now it becomes a whole community project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, so that's one of the ways, though, that we can lower the cost in the short term. But, you know, again, in the long term, we shoot ourselves in the foot over it. Oh. Um, so we're going to we're gonna keep pushing. Um, you know, we, we got calendar problems, obviously, if we want to yeah. If we want to move dirt this year, uh, so we can play on it next year, um, you know we're we're up against it. But um, we're not at at 350 or even 300. We're not really in a place where we can say let's go, let's start. Um, it's um, you know there, we've we've pulled it back to the the essentials pretty much, uh, but uh, and and we've got one big grant application going in next week that. You know, we'll find out about in the late summer, early fall. Uh, so, uh, unless I, w I'm, what I'm hoping is that they, that Barry and the um, the contractors that are ballparking this for us over the next couple of weeks can. Um, and there was some talk of some test pits and things that we might be able to again go back to the drawings and and tweak it and save another chunk of money. So. So, so nothing shifted in, in what the overall design is. You're just showing the. Phase. No, there's. This is really just a, um, a, a fraction of the the main plan that you saw. Right. There's probably a couple of things from an engineering perspective that have changed, but nothing significant. Um, 
And the Lamprey River Association sent back feedback after their review. Yeah. Has any of that been? Well, if if the uh, we'll see what comes out of the permitting process. If there, we need to change anything through that, a lot of those, a lot of that feedback was related to the bigger, the 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 wider project. Um, the biggest wetland impacts come from that second field, which is not shown here in phase one. Um, the um, this, you know, if we if we were to move forward with this, we wouldn't compromise our ability to do any of that in the future. But uh, a lot of the cost and a lot of the impact comes from that second field, where you know this is a a much smaller impact. So, um, and the state permit that we put in covers the entire project. So five, ten years from now, someone in town hits the lottery and wants to donate it. You know, the permitting is all done and complete so and I think that's what kind of what Chris is going at also is that you know that we still have to have the permit even to do the the top upper fields but you know it's not necessarily going to hold us up as much you know we can then tweak the design further as we get into those lower fields to make the uh, Lamprey River Commission happy or whatever we need to do with them so with regards to parking um, that may be not remembering this correctly but I thought like where you have the community gardens between that and the field that was going to be parking over there no I think we made space for there was only supposed to be like four or five parking spaces over there right. it was more going to be just for those individuals who weren't going to be able to necessarily walk we, we weren't going to call it true handicap parking because yep. that brought in a whole slew of other issues okay but it was just for kind of close in parking for those okay. occasional grandparents that need a little extra help so when you're talking about parking you're talking about the, yeah that's the that's main line that yeah. okay. and, and that's one of the areas we're hoping we can save a little bit of money too by you know maybe getting you know the gravel from from the town and even john i know yep. originally you know two years ago said he might be able to help out with some degree okay, yep. okay. Uh, All right. There is a the, the the full plan has a second lot you know to accommodate the future fields, but um, we have not heard. For, we're still looking for somebody to take the lead on the community garden concept. Um, yeah. It's it's been there, but we've had no. We need somebody to really own it somehow, some way that um, whether it's yeah. a, a community group or an individual that's you know that wants to invest some time and energy into getting that off the ground it's not as simple as um just putting it on the plan there and hoping so that it happens so what uh what's there's a spot there for it yeah uh and and i presume that there's some grading that goes along with it uh if it needs it in that spot or maybe some tree removal uh but that's really that's really it that's what the that's so what that the space there's is. some cost for that at Pro there's probably something buried in here but it's, but not, it's significant. not significant no okay, okay. I mean, I, I agree with you. I think, you know, if, if we're going to really pursue that, I think somebody in the community has to be willing to, to take the lead on it. Yep. Yeah, that's an indication of interest, yep. you know, if, if nothing else. But our intent was to grade it out and have it prepared that whenever someone in town is ready to, to step yep. forward and do it, the, 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 the yep. groundwork is done on it. And now okay. they can just plant yep. and do whatever else is required. Okay. And so the best the best estimates that we got were for these from Severino. This is the only second estimate we've got thus far. We had two for the first round yeah. that were the huge number. Okay. Um, I see it's the first first second round. Right. Okay. And um, I mean the, the, even the estimating is charity work for them because they know it's not this isn't real yet. There's no bid here. There's no Yeah. Um, and maybe if you know if we go to bid on it uh, maybe we find some savings there where yep. you know bids are always almost always lower than ballpark guesses but um it's not going to get us down to 200 which yep. is where we're starting so and the uh, the uh the grant that you guys have submitted what's the value of that uh we're going to apply for 50 or 75 probably okay. uh joe porter and i are just finishing that off now yep. um it's in that neighborhood and there's a couple other smaller ones um the um there's a couple foundations that we've identified that are you know the rate, you know they're five figures but not yeah. not huge numbers this is yeah. the the biggest one is the baseball tomorrow for the major league baseball okay. um and that's just about we, we have to finish the financial side kind of waiting on the f 
final we have to present a a financial plan to them just like we have to present one to yeah. you and yeah. uh, that's the last piece that we're, we're trying to put together um, okay. so that we're not going to sell off the loop the, the topsoil that uh, we'll, we'll we'll have to make that decision as we you know when we get to a, a go or no go decision and we'll, then then we'll make that decision then um, just have to see what the real value of it is yeah, what, yeah. what the real value I mean it, it, it has a big value for us to keep in the town but right. it also has a high value on the open market also yeah. Yeah. It, yeah preferably we keep it in town but I mean that's a decision that well, in the long run I think we keep it that's yeah that, I, that's that's, my, that's where that's, we'd want to be but yeah um, yeah yeah um, we're, we're making compromises along the way to get to to get the thing built so if you you can make that call when the time comes yeah. um, okay but. on the dugout construction if Shay makes dugouts they just oh nice okay yeah they don't make them here but yeah they make them and they just they're kind of these you know plug-and-play yeah um, kind of concrete dugouts so cool all right we'll, we'll put that on the list yeah. well, that was something we, th we thought we might get the guard to build for us too um, yeah, but um, yeah I was I, I don't know how I don't know how big Shay's products get but um, we might look to them for the the structure you know the, get to that point. We get to that yeah. but, um, but it's good to know they make dugouts too um, okay I, I appreciate you continuing to plug away at this Matt honestly thanks we're getting there <laughs> and Barry's done Barry's done the bulk of the lifting so yeah. far again yeah. all this yeah. engineering work that he's really carrying the load so far yep okay. trying to get this moving yeah I know he couldn't make it tonight but thanks anybody have any uh, final questions no but I was in Kensington near one of their community parks and they had these um, <clears throat> huge huge meaning wide um, speed bumps that um you know to slow the traffic down so kind of like they would have put it like right in the beginning of oh, on the road and you know on either side like on macrillis road to just to slow down the the traffic it's good consideration i've yeah. seen those there's yeah. a name for them i can't think of what it is yeah. they have them in peterborough too they're like every speed, 50 yards speed apart table? Speed, 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 table. speed table yeah, yeah. speed okay. table yes. sleeping policeman they got, got one or two in durham sleeping yeah. policeman <laughs> All right, thank you, Thanks, Matt. Matt. Yep. Thank you very much. All right, are you folks expecting a few more? All right, well, if you guys are ready to get started, come on down then. We have copies. Yeah, we, we've got copies. We've got Mark copies. Chris gave us. Look at it. Okay, good. I'm sending it to Chris. Did you email it to There's Chris? There's nothing. Yeah. Oh. Or if there's anything radical. Yeah, what you sent me. You can if you want. Well, all we have is this, so if you have more than that, no. there is. Introduce yourself. Hi, hey. uh, I'm Sam Rivera, I chair of the Conservation Commission. Uh, to my right is Susan Woman, who's the secretary, and to her right is uh, Cheryl Smith. Member of the Conservation Commission. Great. So, just for your benefit, you, you probably are aware of this, but we um, tried to try to meet with these folks on a like a quarterly basis or twice a year or something like that, just to you know stay um, informed, mm -hmm. stay in sync <coughs> on um, what what they see coming down the pipe for projects. So that's what this is. Yep. Okay, you have the list in front of you, I believe, and uh, uh, the, the top two we've had on the list uh, in the past kind of 
hell off of doing the Canard, uh, the Kenner property until we f felt we had enough money in the in the conservation fund to do it, even though it's only you know twelve thousand five hundred dollars. That's that's the town owned piece on Kenner uh, Road, as Mr. Kenner likes to call it. <laughs> even though everybody else seems to know it as Kenard Road. Whereabouts is this one? Uh, it's. Uh, Almost, uh, it's probably about a um, half a mile or so uh, before you get to uh, Smoke Street. Oh, okay. So on the dirt section of yeah, yes, so yes, it's about a half mile past the power lines, I think, probably. We well, and you can see the power lines on the left if you drive slowly. Yeah. Okay. Did that just shortly before I retired? Wasn't it maybe a year before? Yeah. About that time. It's been a yeah. while, Charlie. Hmm? It's been a while yeah. since we no, picked up the property. Time flies when you're having a good time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we were we were doing a bunch of other things, and we we didn't know if we would have enough money to do those and this, and we figured, you know, this we could probably slip in any time that we had enough money to do it. Now this is for monitoring in perpetuity. Yeah. Now, is this something that the commission will do, or you you hire somebody to? A professional firm to do these? No, this is uh, that one will be done by Bear Paw. Okay. This is this is Bear Paw uh, 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 price on uh, putting the easement in and having the perpetual. Uh, okay. Uh, the the owner of the property cannot hold the easement and do the easement monitoring. Okay. So. Yeah. I've heard that before, but it just. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think we've stated it a time or two. Yeah. <coughs> uh, uh, the uh, Tenenko property, uh, and we've been looking at uh, a number of pieces of, on his property. He's got a bunch of different lots, you know, mm -hmm. all clustered around his, where his house is. And this uh, this particular one, uh, the 14 to 15 acres, is what's remaining of, that isn't an easement of a lot that he owns that's across the street from his house. Mm -hmm. uh, the easement's, uh, I think, are currently held by uh, NRCS. Does that one go all all the way down to where he's got the gate across from uh, off a of case road across from um, uh, no, that, the, Oak Ridge? Right, that that piece is is the piece that the town has the easement on. Oh, already. Right. Uh, there's uh, what, roughly is that not? I mean, how big that is. Not like 120 acres. I mean, 20 this acres. is um. There's an iron gate there on on right. Case Road across from Oak Ridge, right, right. in that right. area. Further right. further down by his house. So across from his house is an open field yes. that he would like to keep as a garden or maybe put pasture animals out there or somebody else who follows him. So the, the piece that has the gate across it was a donated easement, so John received no compensation for that and mm -hmm. put an easement on it. The other pieces of property that he's been working on with NRCS have various types of easements, some of them in, in what was known as the Wetland Reserve Program. Um, the forest and rangeland is another program that he's had, but he wanted to keep this particular parcel not actually in one of those easements because it's pretty good agricultural land and he wanted that either himself or if he wanted to lease the property out or someone that bought the property in the future would be able to farm that the way that they wanted to farm it. Yeah. And, and it, it, it is hay fields right now and it does have some woodlot as well that would be part of this easement. So, and he's, he's not looking for a lot of compensation, but we don't need, it has to be surveyed to know whether it's, you know, the 13 acres, 15 acres, exactly yeah. where the bounds are, um, and then come up with a range, and that's sort of a range. The 4,400 is, is what it'll cost for the transaction fees to get all that done up and lined up in legal fees, et cetera, through bare okay. And then the 30 to 50 is? Compensation for Coming out the of land that's taken out of potential development. Yeah. Okay. We have not voted. So that would be coming amount. from the conservation fund. Right. And yes. that's not, we haven't yet voted on an amount for that. Okay. The 44 we have voted to approve, okay. but the other amount we haven't. Would the survey and that stuff help give you a better number of the actual value? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, including frontage, yeah. which is important. It's on. Yep. Oh, uh, so started. <laughs> this roof's going to be done, right? <laughs> yes, yes. All except the next spot, right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, and then the uh, the Shippy Rice is, uh, is, is a new one. They've uh, uh, 
they're donating the easement, but the, uh, the 11995 is the transaction cost and the, the cost of a survey, and, yeah. and uh, that will be uh, held by VR Park, so the, that's why it's similar to the you know, kind of property price. And that, that property also um, has frontage on the North River, which that's a um, scenic managed, managed river. Um, and it also butts the Rourke. So it's a it's also the Garland Road. It's between Garland Road and the, and the North River. One of the corridors we're looking at uh, for the uh, for General Screenway and the North South one. That, Eventually, it would probably link up with the uh, Compte and Bach properties up, in the, up on the Barrington line and continue over you know, into Barrington. We won't have anything to do with the stuff in Barrington. But. Right. Okay. Right. And then I just, uh, I left the other properties that had recently been closed on and completed just so that the new board members had yep. some history and some idea of, of those. So anything below that thick black is very even closed. And so was this... Is this list shorter, or am I just remembering a, a longer list because the three that closed were on it? Well, the three that closed were on it. The Trininko actually had two because okay. there were two potential easements on that. But yep. both of those have really gone into the NRCS programs, mm -hmm. and then this is that little piece that's that's left. Yeah. There was one other um, property on there that we had been approached about, but. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Never heard back. No. Okay. Okay. So the three focused on the, the three that are on there. Okay. So the one thirty nine dollar amount. <coughs> the one thirty nine eight two three there, as yes. far as what's remaining. That doesn't that's not these three we need to subtract from correct. Correct. Yeah. correct. So yeah. it's even yeah. less yes. after these three projects would be done. Okay. Should be could be a cut in half. Yeah. If you're on the high end. Yeah. 20 that more. Okay. 28. Good. 28. Four. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. So it would still be a little bit over 100,000. Yeah, a little over 100,000. Yeah, less whatever, you know, I don't think we included this on the, the Well, no, the Ternenko, no. no. That's okay. not so included. Okay. Yeah. That, that could come out of what's remaining. Okay. We don't so expect it to be very big. And John hasn't really talked really what he's looking for, right? He just wants something, I think. Especially where he, he donated the other one, got nothing. His, his wife wanted him to uh, put that in, and he did that be, either before she died or just shortly after she died. Do you, um, being a new member, do you have any questions about any of this? <clears throat> Not really. It looks pretty straightforward. Um, the things that I am, am curious about and just for my own knowledge is that I don't really understand I mean I get that you you buy an easement on a tract of land to protect the you know the, the natural habitat um, but what I don't understand personally is like how the like the extent of that protection or is it, it, it does it differ by easement or yes it really does yeah, yeah you, you can't uh, you know build on it other than you know, maybe a building to support, you know, uh, you know, your agriculture or something like that. Right, like a chicken coop or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah a little yeah, stuff, or, yeah. Yeah, or a sugar house if you're, you know, doing mm -hmm. some sapping. And I assume that's the type of easement is driven oftentimes by the program that's behind yeah, acquiring yeah, easements. Yeah, the easements allow for, for forestry work, agricultural work, and things like that, unless, unless the owner himself wants to restrict it somehow. But right. So that, that doesn't happen, but, you know. But there are, there are a lot of easements that are just done up with the owner, and then there are some easements that are done up through federal programs, and there's mm -hmm. some programs that are done with the, the Society of Protection of the Hampshire Forests. And so there's a number of different ways to to write up or have the easement depending upon what the owner or the agency that's going to be the one that's holding the easement or monitoring the easement. Right. Do you know if there is there like a 
a half decent primer all the, on all this written up somewhere like conservation easements 101 just for the benefit of somebody is, somebody is, like me that doesn't know a lot about it just cruise around online well, just probably probably if you go to, conservation easement if 101. you go to the New Hampshire Conservation Commission Association right New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions thank yes. you okay so probably there's probably a good FAQ there. in there there's something yeah. there and then I believe it cooperative extension also has mm. uh, yeah. some on, on land yeah. stewardship and conservation in terms of yeah. what is a conservation easement Things like that. Right. Yeah. This is federal, like great and then it's the like great, uh, <laughs> cure for insomnia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were Regional, working on yeah. a federal easement up on the square there at one t point. There, Danae's previous, that's previous correct. owner. Pardon me. Oh, that was with Romeo. No, it was the previous owner that we were trying to work with, and he went. John with him. Yeah, it was out. with him. Was with him, and then we talked know, to Romeo you know, afterwards, and then he decided no, he didn't go any place with Romeo. At one time right. to do something up there, but uh, there was not enough money in any funds. That right, yeah, he wanted. Yeah, yeah. I said there are a number of. Like Tony was asking, yeah. Yeah. where do you look? Well, you can probably get a lot of it in one place, but then when it comes to federal easements. Yeah, but, but I think what Tony's looking for is what is an easement, what kind of, you know, what's involved in an yeah. easement, and that's, that's very basic. Yeah. The, yeah. They're all going to be similar as to what they, how an easement is done, how the monitoring is done, what are, what are the nuts and bolts of an easement, but the various programs can be different. Yeah. yeah. Easements are supposed to be monitored uh, for compliance uh, at least once a year. Mm -hmm. we, we ourselves monitor uh, a number of easements here in town, along with a uh, conservation restrictive restrictions on uh, some properties up in the highlands. And what happens when somebody violates their easement or a new well, we, owner? We, we notify them, you know, what the violations is, and we try to help them, you know, get them to straighten it out so they mm -hmm. don't violate it. Yeah. Who, who's going to court if it has to? Who's going to write up the easement language on Cherninko's? Bearpaw. Bearpaw. Bearpaw is doing all, th writing up the easement language on all three of these. It's just that uh, uh, they'll they'll hold the easements on the Kennard and the Shippy Rice properties, and the town will hold them on today. But, mm -hmm. uh, they, we already monitor, you know, the other easement, you know, so it's not that much more for us to just is, to the other section. As soon as we get a little closer and with the uh, surveys being done, particularly on John's, and we get a little bit more of a dollar figure, then we'll come in and request a public hearing date yep. to expend the funds. Mm -hmm. So cor correct me if I'm misstating this, um, <coughs> but the, the interaction between the Conservation Commission and, and the board here is that, you know, we've got the fund, the commission, you know, reviews talks to people prioritizes mm -hmm. where you want the funds to go and we have to approve the expenditure of the funds correct that's so the right. release of the money the from the fund. Fund. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. correct right. so we're the trustees of that fund effectively but, but yes. we vote to approve the expenditure of the funds with a final decision by the board but that's done after a public hearing correct right. yeah yep. so that's why there's the interaction between oh, the yeah. two yeah, yeah. You're not actually trustees. The trustees physically hold the money. Trustees of the trust funds hold the money. Right. Hmm. You are an agent, so to speak. Right. Exactly. Agent. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you for this. I, as always, appreciate that. Um, anybody have any other topics they wanted to raise? Uh, a couple things that uh, we'd like to bring up. Uh, there's been some discussion. That, uh, some of the town roads that they, some have been some scarring of some of the trees along the scenic roads. Uh, Case Road has been pointed out, and, Road. and uh, I don't know if that's what John has been doing some grading or stuff in there, or, but uh, apparently some of the trees have been scarred pretty badly. Okay. Well, well, have you ever that. have you talked to John about that at all? No, I, I haven't. I haven't been aware of any particular problem spots, but um, <clears throat> those those two in particular. Stevens Hill and, and Case, you said. Yeah. Case Road, um, just recently, if you drive along, it has been widened significantly oh, okay. in certain portions to the point where the dirt has just been 
spread up and against the trees. So there's no shrubbery at all, and the dirt is, has been embanked on the trees themselves. And down the road, that's not very healthy for the trees. I should just talk to John about what Well, and they're on scenic roads too, which yeah. I think, you know, they're requirements there, sh those. there should be some conversations that happen and on, our, on our positive note we're, we're glad to see that the turtle crossing signs are up uh, yeah they look good yeah, yeah. good that's good thank you for that and, and i know that we're, we're going to be responsible for folding and unfolding them <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you busy not that many of them and uh, i think uh, we have people around getting close enough to most of the signs anyways so. Possibility of acquiring more of those signs through the through that program? Or? Uh, I think we we've got the last ones that they had. Yeah, Whether okay. they have it, get any more later on, I don't know. And I, that's why that in some cases it's only at one end of like where anticipated the most traffic is going to be moving in through those wetland areas. Usually there's one at each end of a wetland area, but I think they only had six signs left or mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. in from the Fish and Game Department. You also have to be concerned with, with um, driver fatigue. You know, they see something so often that they just don't see it anymore. What the hell, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's why we got these folding ones. So, you know, when the season is over, we can down so they, I want to, we put them These back have on. got a lot more attention than those little ones they used yeah. to have made up and stuck in the ground. Yeah, Celia and I did that years ago. Yeah. But but people, people have, I've had comments on it, so people have noticed the new signs. And they yeah. drive slower on Flutter Street. Do they? Yeah. Well, that and the turkeys crossing the road all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Anything else, Sam? Oh, Can I speak to that? Sure. Um, oh. When we first, when the Conservation Commission folks went out um, to pick up 152 and 156, one mile of each, there was so much trash to pick up, we had to schedule another pickup day. Mm -hmm. And when we went and monitored Mendham's easements last fall, we were appalled by all the trash on the road. And then also coming in, 152 past Perkins Fields, there's a ton of trash on both sides of the road. So I've called um, and left a message for Lucas Miller, who's District 6 Adopt a Highway Program Manager. I have not heard a peep. I kind of wonder if Susan Mooney Conservation Commission doesn't have enough oomph to it. So <laughs> I'd like to pass this along to the Board of Selectmen and maybe ask Mr. Miller if they could put up two please adopt this highway signs on 152 past Perkins and they may be along Route 4. So they, they put those, those, so they work to coordinate to get people to adopt yes. it. So they'll put yes. a sign up first that says, please adopt this. Yes. And then when the group adopts it, then they'll yes. mm -hmm. put a sign up for that. Uh, we've got, you know, like the, the Conservation Commission has the one that's just this side of uh, Guile Road on uh, Stage Road. Yep, a PLIA does right. down that With the White Family. White Family, White family does, does another section. Two miles and then the yeah. PLIA picks up yeah. the rest of yeah. Yeah. Uh, Raymond Road. And then of course we pick up Raymond Road from out here uh, up to the, the square. The square. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I know previously on, on Route 4 there had been other uh, parties that would uh, do some. I know SOG had a section there for a while, but I guess they're out of business at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there was a lawyer I think had a, had a section. Uh, and generally they, once people, you know, leave that program, they leave the signs up for a while. Yeah. And, uh, but then after a while they, they take them down. Okay. So do you have that contact information on that note? Yes, I do. A little piece of paper. Can you just give it to Dawn? I'll do that. Okay. That we I always dragged our kids out to, to clean up the road, take them, get exercise and clean up the road at the same time. But even, al even along roads that people live on, town roads, it would be nice to remind people once in a while to pick up trash or don't throw trash out. Yeah, yeah. I generally pick up the, the trash along in front of my house and then a little bit of the neighbor's property. Okay. okay. It's, it's not a, it's not a one two mile stretch. I mean, no, I was just when I, I was just thinking like, can we have some kind of a contest?
for kids to go out and see who picks up the most trash or something like that. You know, just try to get families and kids out there thinking about it. Yeah, of course, well. of course on, the, on the state roads, you, uh, they want you to have the signs up, and you, it, which are available from you know, yep. a temporary basis from uh, DOT. Yep. And you wear uh, some sort of a safety vest. Orange, yeah. We approached that some years back about having, say, the Boy Scouts or somebody, yeah. and that's a big no-no. Mm -hmm. Liabil oh, really? The liability is huge. Oh, really? It's okay if adults are out there wearing a vest pickings, but not kids. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. Thank you guys for coming You're in. Welcome. Thank you. I have a Thank question. Oh. It's too late. <laughs> Do you guys have any workshops or anything that you're planning for summer, fall? Oh, I know, I know that like we, that we're going to sponsor. Yeah, I know that you've done some in the past. Is there's curious. been talk of doing a um, like a bird wildlife uh, walk, but we we haven't gotten there yet. And I'm one of the. And during the summer, sometimes it's a little <coughs> tough to sometimes yeah. get the attendance because people are off here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. but we do we do the water testing this time of year, starting um, this month and goes into September. We test water at um, three sites in town: two on the North River and one on Little River. Yeah, Sam won't let me do that anymore because I lost the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I almost lost the bucket. You got it back. Do you have to okay. swim for it? Okay. Okay. Almost. It was humorous. It really was. It was very interesting to watch <laughs> running down the <laughs> running river down after a floating road bucket. Trying to, trying to catch up to the bucket. Road. You have to, you have to bring like the buckets on a piece of rope and you have to yeah. like lower it down. And yeah. I don't know. It slipped off or it something. It slipped like off and because the river was running <laughs> pretty strong and there goes the bucket. It's a lot easier when you're doing it off of a boat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks right, very thank much. You. Thank, you. thank you. I hope you don't get wet run into the cars. Yeah, you Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Jinxed you. I do have just one question, and I didn't know if the board, had the board addressed, and I, don't, I think initially you had not gotten a copy, and I think Sam may have asked Don to give you the copy, or, or asked Joanne to give you the copy for the review that the, Lamprey River. Yep. Um, on Marston. Yeah, on Marston. We just we just talked about that. We got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know since he was here, I figured that probably came up, but I think there was some pretty significant issues there that needed to be followed up on. Okay. Thank you. Where do you want to go next, Chris? Uh, let's see. What do you have on your list? Uh, tax collect so waiver of interest by the tax collector is on your agenda. Yep. Um, the board has the authority to give the tax collector permission or authority to waive small amounts of interest. Uh, transaction delay, somebody comes in a day late or yep. you know, a transaction closes a day late and the interest yep. per DM interest gets all screwed up. Um, we have long had uh, the tax collector has long had that authority in town and uh, Jean Reed, the new tax collector, has asked for a similar authority uh, from you to uh, to waive up to five dollars. The law says you can waive up to twenty five dollars, but five has been sufficient uh, and we're just uh, and that, that's what he's requesting. That's what he's five. asked for. And uh, OK, so so move. There you go. He, need so on that. he needs to read it. That's there. no, that's fine. No, no your signature is just as good. Okay. Doesn't matter. Um, and Gene is settled in and doing well. I think so. Good. I think he would tell you that. Yeah, he's a pain in the neck, but uh, he's uh, he's doing his job. He's doing his he's job. Very yeah. detail oriented. He's uh, not a bad thing. In a good way. Uh, yeah, no, he's uh, he's been in a lot. He's putting in a lot of time. Uh, and he's going through his first uh, wave of tax bills right now. Oh, and, right. Uh, and uh, spent a lot of time with uh, folks in our office and uh, seems to have his feet under him and Excellent. doing well. Excellent. Um, uh, uh, under general business, the insurance rate cap question, we talked a lot about that two weeks ago and you said, let's chew on it for a couple weeks and make a decision. Um, and uh, the recommendation was to, to accept the 
uh, cap on the property and liability program, but not on the workers' comp program. And I have not heard from any of you about it for two weeks, so I don't know if you are still comfortable with it or what your pleasure is. Did we delay that because we wanted to make sure that Tony had We just wanted Tony to make sure he had um, any questions or anything. It was mainly. I was eating fish when you guys were reviewing that. Okay. So <laughs> I haven't had a chance to look at any of that. Uh, is it something we need to move on or like we, right away? Yeah, we, we need to, if we're going to do it, we need to do it by, what's our deadline? Oops, yep, I see that. I have it in here somewhere. Yeah, it's in the packet from the last meeting that you just gave yeah, me. Uh, yeah. You have until July 24th to execute the agreement and turn it back. So we have more time if you want. Except we might not be meeting yeah, on the third. Yeah. Yes. Do you want more time, Tony? Um, did you want to vote on it, like with all five of us here? I know it's Tyler. We just, we just Tyler was okay with it. We just yeah. didn't. Yeah. We just didn't know if you had any questions on it. If we renew. Yeah. So the kicker is, if we renew coverage, we get the three-year. We get the rate cap. Is that what it boils down to? Chris, you want to give them the Reader's Digest? The Reader's if, Digest. Yes. If, if you if we commit for three years, we have a guaranteed cap on our rate increases uh, it's a three-year commitment to to basically purchase insurance from them in exchange for the cost certainty of that the cap provides um, so it'll give us a, a better some better insight for budgetary planning yes um, and there were a couple things that were uh, looming is too strong a word, but uh, pending that we think might bump our um, our liability, kind of our base rate, and that is the taking over of USA Sings Springs property, which mm -hmm. adds a lot to our the value of our town-owned property, right? Uh, and the addition of a full-time police officer. Both of those things have an impact on premiums for liability insurance, property, and liability insurance. Um, so it felt like a good time to do it, given that there isn't really a lot of competition in the market for this product. So we're not likely to get another offer like this. We will continue to get the, a similar offer from Primax if we don't sign up for it. Right. Uh, I would assume that we'd have a similar opportunity next year. Where you know, uh, it seems very unlikely that we would switch providers within the next two years so on the outside maybe there'll be a new provider in the market yeah. in a couple or three years but it seems rather unlikely that we move for two of the three years anyway no it makes sense in principle So the first table is <coughs> workers' comp, and the second table is property liability. You're all set? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, okay. it makes sense. You need a motion from us? There's your motion, which is the same thing that you got from me a couple weeks ago. Different piece of paper. Yeah. The whole paragraph. Yep. Yeah. I'll make a motion um, to hereby accept the offer of the New Hampshire Public Risk Management Exchange, Primex, to enter into its probability and liability contribution assurance program. 
as of the date of the adoption of this resolution and to be contractually bound to all of the terms and conditions of Primex Risk Management Pool membership during the term of the Property and Liability Contribution Assurance Program. The coverage provided by Primex in each year of membership shall be as then set forth in the coverage documents Primex. I tested it. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Signature four. Um, did you get all that done? I saw you typing away. Aye. Do you want me to date this for today, or do you want to just date it? Uh, I can do the rest of it. Check that page before it and see if there's a signature on that one before it. Is there a, is there a thing for you there, too? Yeah. Okay, what's next? Uh, the only other thing, we have a quick non-public, but uh, before that, uh, the environmental consultant for the Route 4 property, uh, we left off with uh, two weeks ago, you saying to Charlene and I go off and finalize it and send you the contract before we enter it. We yeah. pick, pick somebody and come back to us. Um, uh, we did all that uh, and at uh, 25 past 6 pretty much came to terms on uh, our, our selection and the contract document. So I'm going to send you the contract electronically and you can look at it before we execute it. Okay. Uh, but just to give you some background, um, we, we get seven responses, interviewed four firms, um, found all four of them technically could do the work I think yeah. the, from a scientific point of view we're not asking for anything too complex it's um, it's a very common kind of project uh, we ended up selecting geo insight out of Manchester um, they uh, did some work for us to, for our planning board on this project year ago. Um, their stuff is littered through our files all over the place um, I think we'll actually end up working with a couple different principles that, but uh, same firm. Um, uh, we ended up with them because we uh, we felt they had the best grasp of the situation that we're in around this property. The, the science of this is going to end up being pretty straightforward. I think they're going to they're going to review the documents and they're come back and they're going to recommend that you, we test for a couple things, test the trust the water for a couple things. Yeah. Um, and that there with some variation that's pretty much what we heard from everybody some would just go right to testing and some would want to think about it first there are you know there's a there's an upside to testing right up front and there's also consequences to testing right up front so we um, we wanted to take that step very uh, deliberately uh, and uh, this firm of the four that we spoke to seemed to understand best the uh, what we're trying to accomplish and the reason that we're doing things in the order that we are, um, you know, our liability concerns and our our hopes for the future of the property and yep. uh, those kinds of things. So that's how we ended up with them. Um, they weren't the cheapest. Um, this contract is for 6,600 right? plus. plus what we expect to see some more testing costs. Yep. Um, is that like right in the middle or? Uh, this is second highest okay they, 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 what, they weren't significantly different yeah there's a you know, thousand bucks yeah, here or there um, uh, and it's you know everybody prices things a little bit differently in terms of this step and that step yep. and yep. Um, so um, uh, I don't know anything else well, three uh, of the four that we interviewed had um, 
had some experience. Had some experience with that site, so oh, that was okay, really okay. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, on different sides. Yeah, on different sides. You know, some work for. Oh really? Owners and some work for the town and yeah. And the one that we are going with. Geo Insight worked for the town. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just not that that was a that really no. wasn't a determining <laughs> factor. No. Uh, no, no, it's, no. Um, sure. uh, but there is some institutional understanding yeah, there. Which was, was. So you decided who the right pick is. We've got an enter contract with them. Who signs that? Do we all sign that? Uh, I will uh, once you all have a chance to look at it and say I'm okay with it. So I'll, okay. I'll say it tonight. <laughs> Just agreed on it before we start a meeting. So, okay. Um, okay. And uh, the, um, we'll get that to you electronically. Wait, then, how soon would they get started? They're ready to go. The, as soon as they have the documents, they're going to start the records review. So, so we'll um, all try to review that contract right away. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they think it's going to take about three weeks to come back to us with a report on what they learned from the records review in a, in a site visit. Okay. Okay. Um, so they get the pace. That, that was that was not a challenge with any of them. I, I think they all they all said they could meet our timelines. Yeah, and, you know, they all said that. Um, yeah. Good. So they know that we're we're looking to move. Um, okay. So Quest, questions for Chris on that? Okay. Okay. What's what's is this something we need to talk about? The D E D S. Oh, if you want to talk about it, um, yeah, I sent you that uh, just so you're in the loop. There's um, this is. Those of you watching at home, uh, we were notified by DES that we need to, um, by next year, test our landfill, uh, to include in our landfill groundwater testing. Um, uh, don't make me say the word. Uh, petro, PFOA, that's what you hear in the news. Yep. Um, or broadly, PFAs collectively. Um, and so I spoke with our engineering firm about it. Um, their recommendation was that uh, since we've already done this year's groundwater testing for our site to do it next year, DES gave us 18 months. Um, there was nothing about our site that screamed out at them, yeah, you should rush right out and test it. Um, it's a lot like, there's, there's hundreds of sites like this in the state. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's just, this is something that's just coming on the radar. The science is catching up. Um, um, a couple of towns, uh, Auburn just recently found something off of their landfill. So um, it, I think it's probably going to be quite common. It's the nature of such things. Um, and uh, the this is just an initial, this is DES's initial screening. I think they're trying to figure out the size of the situation statewide, and okay. that's what they're looking okay. for us to help okay. do. Right. Um, so they'll come back to us with a, a CMA, our, our engineers will come back to us with a, um, a, a, a something we can budget with for next year. It's, it's in the neighborhood of a couple thousand bucks, I think. Um, and that's what they said. Um, so not a budget buster up front, um, but something we can do next year as part of our regular groundwater testing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is that it? July 3rd. Oh, yeah, July 3rd. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want to meet? Do you want to? Is there anything critical that we would need to discuss? Not yet. Okay. I, I'm not anticipating anything, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't see anything. We've been trying to steer around it scheduling-wise. We're on the, the one after that is the, I guess that would be the 17th? Yeah. 16th. Sorry, correct. Yeah, 17th. So, okay. Um, the, the, uh, we typically do a, a second quarter financial update uh, right as June ends. Yep. Um, the third's actually kind of quick to do that really well, so uh, I was going to do that on the 17th anyway. Um, and there is nothing else on your radar okay. for the third. So I think what I would I would suggest is that we just um, do a tentative. I know you have to give certain dates notice but I would say don't do it on the third and let's just kind of say the following Monday whatever date that would be um, tentative if needed and yeah, I'm fine that's with that. fine I'm fine with that just in case something comes up and you yep. you need an answer or a decision otherwise okay. I'm fine with that so the 10th if needed if needed yeah. good with that Charlie yeah that's fine all right. 
Okay. So the other thing we have left is non-public. Yep. But before we do that, is there anything else? Anybody have any other topics, questions? I'm good. Okay. You good? Um, no, I just uh, wanted to apologize for missing our last meeting since my car failed unexpectedly, and I wanted to thank Tyler for stepping up and covering my check signing when I couldn't make it. Hopefully you were at least able to get some pleasure out of those additional days. I ate more fish than I have ever eaten in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all they have in Nova Scotia is fish, it seems. All right, Chris, what are we going on to L? L. Okay. I'll make a motion that we go into non-public per RSA 91-A colon 32L. Do we second? Uh, you, need a, you need a second. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor, roll call. Aye. Brown. Aye. Aye. Donna. Aye. Tony. All right. We will be going into non-public. Uh, there's no further business to be discussed in public meetings, so once we come out of non-public, we will be closing the meeting. So thank you.